receive. If you live right near Hanford, near the river, your annual dose is about 90 millirems per year. The US average, up until very recently, was about 350 millirems per year. They since doubled it to about 620, given all of the CT scans and medical procedures that people get. So just putting it into perspective. You'll see if you read our comments that Oregon still perceives some uncertainty in the way that the model used the information available, in the amount of information that was available, and the different uncertainties that the model considered. We think there's some more uncertainty to be managed here. So there's a bit of a grain of salt in our mind for, for this dose number, uh, but it is pretty low. The inadvertent intruder pathway, <coughs> this was an acute dose, so a one-time dose and it was calculated to be about 36 millirem out of a standard of 500. Um, and then a chronic dose to a farmer who then spreads the drill cuttings over the field to about 8.2 millirems a year. Uh, however, we, we also had the point in our letter that the soils underneath the tank farm are already contaminated with past leaks. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute, but if there's already contamination in the soil and you drill a well, you're probably going to encounter that soil as well. And this performance assessment did not include that. So the caveat here is that this dose might be higher than what it's shown. I think. Moving on to the third criteria. Uh, this is a really complicated one, and they followed some guidance by the NRC. Rather than dive into the weeds on this, I'm just going to say that Oregon looks forward to NRC's review of the third criteria. And we have the NRC here in the house mm -hmm. tonight. Um, and we have some particular questions about how this criteria is interpreted. Getting close to the end now. I don't know how I have the time. Um, I want to end by talking about what this decision does not include. So DOE has, I want to start with just a basic cartoon. This is a vision of the future of grounded tanks with a cap over the top. Now the caveat here is we do have waste that is in soil. We also have a plume in groundwater the decisions for what to do about those have not yet been made. So take this picture with a bit of a grain of salt. And now I want to talk about what's, what this decision actually does do. So in red is what this weird decision is about. It says let's look at the tanks and the performance of the cap we put over it, and let's look at anything that might leak out of these tanks over the next 1,000 to 10,000 years. It does not look at how what leaks out over the next 10,000 years could intermingle with what's already there. DOE proposes to use different cleanup processes. It's kind of a nesting doll of different analyses that are involved there. Um, two things I want to point out. One, we're doing a weir for these tanks, and we have waste that used to be in the tanks and is now in the soil. There is not currently a plan to do a weir for the waste in the soil. That is factually true. Hmm. Um, another point that I want to make is that there is a document called a composite analysis that looks at the risk of this one decision in the context of all the other waste sites that are around and wow. some cumulative effects. That document is not planned to be unveiled until about 2020, wow. until when DOE actually gets to the closure part of it. Hmm. Again, I want to point out, this is a current groundwater plume under the sea farm today. It's Technetium 99. Anything in color exceeds the drinking water standard. Wow. You can see it exceeds it by, what is that? Oh, uh, At least 10, more than 10 times. So we know that there's something that needs to be addressed there today. It's not part of this decision. Talking about process for a second. We're in the red box, waste incidental reprocessing. It uses the performance assessment off to the left. And there are a lot of different moving parts that are involved before DOE can actually get authorization to close these tanks. The green ones were completed uh, back in 2012, 2013. The yellow ones are currently in process. And the green uh. are in now I'm gonna close by talking about what Oregon has found in the Weir evaluation and performance assessment, and some specific recommendations that we made in our letter. Mm -hmm. First, we found that there's a need for some additional uncertainty analysis uh, for compound effects. When they did their model, they did some uncertainty cases like, 
What if the cap fails after 100 years? Or what if the ground really sucks and it fails on day one? Or what if we get a lot more rain than we expect? So that, and they pulled one lever at a time and ran their model and said, does it matter? Does it affect the dose? We like to see them pull multiple levers at once and see what that does. Um, we would like DOE to include the full decision package, which includes the composite analysis, that cumulative effects, as well as the performance assessment maintenance plan. The performance assessment maintenance plan says, we know there's uncertainty going into the future, and we're going to continue learning, and we're going to update our assumptions that went into this 10,000 year model as time goes on. We like to be a part of that because that's really how you're going to find out later if the decision you made today was wrong. And we want to make sure that you're looking for the right information to find that out. Next, Oregon expects to see a weir evaluation for the waste that was leaked in the soil. We think that it deserves the same scrutiny and rigor as the waste that was in the tanks. We also think that DOE should look for more powerful waste retrieval technologies, such as stronger pumps, uh, mechanical retrieval instead of liquid retrieval. That there's an opportunity to get more waste out of these tanks, and if you grout them now, you lose that opportunity. And finally, <clears throat> it is Oregon's position that tank closure is not a near-term schedule or budget priority at Hanford. We think there are things that are more deserving, such as finishing the waste treatment plant. And so Oregon has recommended that DOE not proceed with the tank closure document approval until the waste treatment plant is operational. That's all I've got. <laughs>